So this cute little tiller is toast. Somebody did something really, really bad to it. And if you look, you can see that that shaft is bent going through the, I don't call it the transmission, but the gearbox, which has got a chain and a gear at either end. One gear down there, and then one gear opposite this pulley. And I put a pipe wrench on this shaft and I couldn't even turn it a sixteenth of an inch. So that means that the, the gear inside is has gone. And, and this doesn't look like it's got a lot of hours on it either, and it's a pretty good quality little guy. You know? I did replace, somebody's been bad to this thing though. Uh, I did replace the engine four or five years ago for this beautiful family. Uh, they are, you know, the city that I live in, they had five boys and all the boys played ball and the dad coached and the mom flipped hamburgers and they go back you know, they're just the family that you need in a, in a city. But I, I checked it out, I looked at a, quite a few tiller videos, and that transmission, if I could even find the right one, is $241 US, so it's 300 Canadian, and then we're looking at at least two or three to six hours to fix it, so now we're looking at uh, what, $450 to fix this tiller? And there's a used engine that came off of a pump on there right now. So that's kind of sad, eh? But for used parts, I got the engine, I can keep that. All these keepers, woohoo, baby! Uh, idler pulleys, belts even, are in pretty good shape. A lot of these, you know, and this, this bar, woohoo! So I got some good parts coming off of there, but I'm not going to do it right now. I got other things to do. So that's my little sad story about the uh, Homolite tiller. Hi guys, this is the tiller that has the seized transmission on it. I think I showed you that. So now I'm just going to start this guy up, and uh, drain the fuel out of him. I guess it's a boy, eh? And we'll just put the engine in storage until I can uh, probably sell it. So let's see if I can get this thing started. Yeah, it should go. Oh, yeah. So the first thing I'm going to do is is uh, kick the gas out of this guy and then run him dry. Which way do you do it? I think I'll do it the good back method. You guys can come over here. And I think you can watch from about there. Yes, sir, Bob. Now, I usually use some kind of a device to hold the hose still. Sometimes these rubber screwdrivers do it, depending on the size of the gas holder. Lovely. a bit of gas and it's nice gas. That's her. Soak up the last of the fumes. He was snap, snap! Get that one? Like uh, it's like I'm an operating room and I'm a doctor yelling, hemostat, stat, which means like right now. And I got a 
a little fuel. Check with flashlight. I trouble right now is I've got stuff on the benches. That tank is dry, baby. Good. Just run them out of gas. Put the gas cap back on. Out of fuel. Okay. Now I'm just going to uh, be right back. I'm going to check a couple things, and we'll take this engine off the off the frame. Okay, here we are. Oops, we're backing up a little bit so you can see where we're at. There's the tiller, and there's the drain plug for the oil right there. It's a three eighths square, but you could there's. There, there are eight point sockets, not six point sockets, and this is a, this is an eight pointer. Cool. Huh? Good enough. So this engine's going into storage, unfortunately. Till I uh, find a use or sell it. But you have to consider the value of the engine along with uh, the difference of what it would cost you to repair, right? So even on this uh, little engine that I'm going to keep and store away, I change the fuel on it. And I label them if they need anything. Like I'll check the air filter before I store the engine. This is 1030. Unless it specifies I don't use any. The manual on this says 1030. There's even probably a 1030 sticker on this one. Now, if I tilt this forward, I should just see oil when the engine starts to become level. And it's right there. So that engine's got lots of oil in it. Now, we get to take it apart. Which bolt first? I guess we've got to get the, uh, the belt off, but it should come off. Yeah. Good belt to start with, right? Because the purchaser of the engine doesn't necessarily get to keep the keepers. So I'm the keeper. Oh, okay. I'm the keeper of the keepers. Okay, Tom. This is the gold, hey, this stuff is gold, right? Now, this pump, this engine will take one of those little pumps that goes on uh, like a washer pump. So not only are the, are the brackets handy, these threaded nuts are really, bolts are really handy too. Alright, what's next? What else is not attached? I think that is it, my friends. It's got oil in it. Well, look at this. I guess we should just look at the air filter now. Oh, it's practically brand new. 
And in fact, you know, you got to keep this in your mind, right? Let's say the, this fall I've gone through all my Briggs filters. I've got a, a late mower come in or anything. I know where there's a good filter. Because it costs 80 bucks to leave the house. Okay, let's just see if I can undo these. Get it from underneath. Great hardware, huh? Yeah, what about that back one? I might have to uh, just use a ratchet, a ratchet on that one. I have no idea if I can get out the user. Yep. Yep. Just taking the bolt off on the other side here, the back one. It's not coming. The bolt is off, or the nut is off, but the bolt's not coming. So we'll do the same thing over here. So this engine's ready to go, right? It's got a quarter, or it's got a half a liter, or you know, half a quart US close. And uh, I should just pull off of here and I'm going to stick it on my bench over there. Oh. Oh, it's all totally manual. All I got to do is not burn, burn myself on that. I'm just going to grab a ray and see how dirty it is underneath. Remember, that muffler's hot. There's the two mounting bolts I couldn't get out. In fact, I can just get the one off. Good. Free stuff. No, I think I'm going to take that pulley off of there, too. Alright, this is transmission fluid and acetone. Works good as a bolt and scrub, -roo, scrub screw remover. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, this should come out. Look at that, folks. Now, let's just use a tapper. It might be too hot to touch it. Yay! Oh, and the, the best part? The key! There, this motor is ready for storage. Can run out of fuel, clean air filter, half a liter of oil, no air, no gas in the tank, 
and it doesn't even have controls on it. It's completely uh, like a, what do you call a uh, self-contained unit, just like it is. They're perfect little stationary engines, three and a half horsepower. Are we lucky or what? Thanks, thanks for uh, for following me along on this little removal. Now the rest is this thing. Are we filming? <laughs> That's so me, right? Okay, here we go. I'm going to start taking stuff off this thing now. Throw the pieces of wood in case I need them. And if you ever taken anything apart, notice that you need little pieces of wood. First of all, we'll work with the thing. So this is an idler pulley. Another valuable commodity. I'm mostly excited about the keepers. Okay. Eliminator performance. Wouldn't that be handy in uh, the end of November, huh? For snowblowers. It's even got the collar that comes just past the pulley so you can mount it on a shaft like it just came off of. Alright. Now, this is going to be 9 sixteenths or half inch from here in, from here forward. Tightened up too. Holy! Took me a while to get rolling on this one. Drop the nut on that one. Now I'm going to use a. I'm going to use the big boy here. Half inch. I don't like hurting my tools. Now where's the other end of that? Okay. See how it works on the other side. So I'm just about to trick you guys off and then something interesting is going to happen, right? Good. Now, of course, the cable is still connected. We can deal with that right now. We got her. We got her, Carter. All right, that's well-made stuff, you guys. I can make a mini bike. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Okay, I don't know whether I'm going to take that down any further or not. I got one thing to find, and, I'll be, and I'm just going to keep on taking bolts off now. I know you can't keep everything, but that's in, I got the pin. I took that pin out and I got that, or the clip, got that back in. And the other end of it is a spring with a, almost like a uh, throttle attachment. So that is going into my cable drawer. How many tillers are missing one of these? Okay, this is going in the welding pile. Look at how thick that is. Or the something pile, I'm not sure. So just a little catch up as to where we are. Things are happening over here. Uh, let me see where we're at. Is this going to come off? Not yet. It's not ready. 
So now, do we turn this on its side? It's still got some freaking weight to it, then. Oh, drop my watch! I know, that's what I'm going to do. i got to stop saying that. Okay, here we go. Nope, not going to go. Big socket. I'll just crack it all. I tell you, when you need, it is nice to have a big one when you need it. This one might not go, so I'm going to have to turn it over the other way. I don't want to. It's still pretty heavy. There we go. One, two, three. Four and five. Okay, let's see what we can do with the machine here. On nine sixteenths now. You guys still watching a little bit, hey? I could use air too, right? I think this is the one that's holding most of it together now, except for the drive pulley. Good, it's coming. First thing we gotta do is get this out. So to change the transmission in this, I don't like it the way they call them transmissions, but to change the gearbox in this thing, this is this is how far you'd have to go. <sighs> I'm gonna save that pulley. Can I do it with this? Tempted to cut that off with a with a cutoff saw, and then I can get the pulley up. But you know, it's very seldom that I need pulleys. Hmm. Let me think about that. I'll be right back. Okay, this pulley slash sheave has got four rubber screws on it, man. I just want it off. And I'm just going to take the round corners off the ends of this. I know how pulleys go. I'm just going to do a quick little heat on this bad boy and then I don't think it's moving so I don't think we're going to need any more lubrication.
You can watch. You can watch from there. Nope. Oops. Okay, I gotta do it now. This, when you get this close, it's just a matter of sheer will and destruction. Yeah, it's right on the end now, man. You saw it first here on Bruce Pender TV. And why, the reason why I worked so hard on this, is I also got this. And it looks pretty darn close. Except this is a 5 8 and this is a 3 quarter uh, hole hinge. So that's kind of, in case the snowblower I'm working on needs this. Instead of, no, it's this instead of this. Do I take the tines off? They feel loose, you know, I'm gonna, or at least the tines and the pins. Hmm. Okay. When I get those other three off of there, I'll let you know. And we're almost done. There's the pile of chassis pieces. Not staged. All right. Here we go. Holy moly, baby. That was a major. Got it right down to the last piece of unusable crap. Nope, I'm not even going to take it. Uh, I might just take the handlebars apart and that's it. So there's the junk there. The junk there. A few of the good pieces over here. And mostly hardware, eh? Thanks, guys. Alright. Isn't that a beautiful set of hardware, eh? Uh, pins, clips, good bolts. Some of them have the uh, lock washer kind of built into the underside of the top. Some of them are just straight. Uh, now, what these look like, but they're not. These look like a class 8 bolt, right? But actually, you see the three marks there, one, two, three, and the V. That means it's a it's a grade five or a class five bolt. A bit of a cheat on the color. But springs, I talked about these. Um, so yeah, there's some good stuff here. Prime hardware. Bushings, man. Right? Three eighths to half inch bushings. Different lengths too. I think that one's a 5 eighths. Whatever. So that's, oh, and a couple of uh, keys, right? Good stuff. So thanks for watching this one. If, th uh, pardon me. Thanks for watching this one, folks.